There is no perfect way to set up a four-wheel drive, as each owner will have their own special requirements and needs. So depending on how the vehicle is going to be used will determine how it needs to be set up. And that is very personal and different from vehicle to vehicle. So come and have a look at my little Discovery Series 2, and I'll show you how I've set mine up for how I use it, as it gets used for long distance touring, short high country trips, taxiing the kids from sports events, going to and from work every day, so it just does everything. But when I take the family out camping, we don't tow anything. We are self-sufficient within the vehicle. So come down and have a look, and I'll go through all the alterations and modifications that have been added to this car. Under this Discovery, we have a 6mm mild steel steering protector, and specially made balanced sway bars front and rear, featuring a freewheeling hub on one end for easy disconnection. The front diff housing has been extensively modified. Where the diff gets bolted into the housing has been cut out, rotated and re-welded in. This was done to change the front diff pinion angle to get rid of the front cardinal joint prop shaft. The diff housing was then pieced back together, welded up and then braced. Inside the front diff housing consists of an Ashcroft diff locker, heavy duty front axles and CV joints and heavy duty 4.35 to 1 gram on pinion. There is a welded on diff guard to protect the internals as the front face of these diff housings is only made out of sheet metal. The track rod has been replaced with a heavy duty 32mm diameter version. And steering caster plates have been added to put 4 degrees back into the steering geometry. A Bilstein steering damper has been added to reduce any vibration. The front prop shaft has been replaced using a universal to universal shaft, getting rid of the problematic cardinal joint. A full twin 3 inch mandrel bent exhaust system has been fitted to remove the exhaust gases from the 6.2 litre V8, which is fitted to a 6 speed automatic back onto the LT230 transfer case. Fitted with an Ashcroft Helical diff centre with a larger capacity sub increasing the oil volume. The rear prop shaft has also been replaced using a universal to universal getting rid of the rubber rotor coupling which are notorious for breaking down. With a 430 horsepower out of the engine, there's no way it would have stayed there anyway. The rear diff also has an Ashcroft rear diff locker and 4.35 to 1 crown wheel and pinion. A heavy duty ball joint rear on the top was also added, making the whole drive line very strong and reliable. We have three long range automotive tanks fitted to this car, sills and one rear main. Each sill holds 50 litres and the rear main holds 115, giving a grand total of 215 litres. Rear suspension control arms have been replaced using a Series 1 Discovery. The reason this was done is because we've actually moved the rear axle back 3 inches for more stability and far superior suspension articulation. The rear sway bar is the same as the front using a freewheeling hub for quick disconnection. For Bilstein shocks fitted front and rear, the rear ones have been revalved due to the weight of the vehicle. And the front spring rates are 220 pounds per inch and the rears are 320 fitted with a poly airbag. There are six rock lights fitted to the bottom. The two rear ones double up as reversing lights. The wheelbase of this Discovery is now 105 inches. The rear axle has been moved back 3 inches and the front axle moved forward 2 inches. This has all been possible by tubbing the rear wheel arches and modifying the front inner guards, making a custom Fat Boy rear quarter flare to cover the 35 inch tyres without the use of a body lift kit, keeping the centre of gravity as low as possible. The chassis was then laminated with 4mm mild steel plates and the GVM upgraded to 3050 kilograms. Under the bonnet you'll find a GM 6.2 litre LS3 full alloy V8 producing 430 horsepower. These engines are lightweight, basic configuration and easy to repair, and fit snugly underneath the bonnet. 
using our ceramic coated extractors to get rid of the exhaust gases through the twin 3 inch exhaust system. Air supplied to the engine through a 4 inch inline air cleaner element, fed off the snorkel and also from underneath the wheel arch, which can be shut off if required. The original brake booster was also removed, being replaced by a hydro boost, which is a hydraulic brake booster system, which helps apply great braking pressure to pull up these 35 inch tyres. The original windscreen washer bottle had to be relocated when we moved the front wheels forward 2 inches. A large custom aluminium radiator was then made, fitted with two electronic cooling fans to keep the LS3 cool. An ARB air compressor has been neatly located in the back driver's side of the bonnet area, which is used to operate the front and rear diff locks as well as pumping up tyres as required. Protecting the front of the Discovery 2 is a stylish and colour coded ARB Sahara bar. Mounted to the bar is a pair of UltraVision HID driving lights and a Warn XP9500 winch, complete with plasma rope. The original headlights have been upgraded to super white H7 globes, and the genuine Land Rover headlight guards protect the headlights themselves. A GME UHF aerial sits proudly on top of the hoop. The tyres are 315-7516 BF Goodrich All-Terrain KO2s. Fitted onto a 16x8 POS6 offset alloyed rage rims, which unfortunately are no longer available. Covering these tyres with this big offset is a set of colour coded Fat Boy flares, which protrude about 100mm off the original panel work, complete with rubber infills and large mud flaps. relocates this large wheel to fit nicely in the middle of the door. The rear of the vehicle is protected by a lightweight colour coated steel bumper bar, which is just above the Heyman Reese tow bar assembly. Featuring front and rear Storm Series badging, genuine rear tail light covers, a pair of white tiger rock sliders which contour to the bottom of the doors making them a nice snug fit. On the top of the vehicle is a full length tradesman flat style roof rack with a mesh floor and mounted to that is a Darchi 270 Eclipse awning which has just replaced my smaller ARB one which is much easier to set up and gives so much more coverage. The interior of the car I've tried to keep pretty well standard and any additions made fairly subtle. But to make the interior a bit more modern I have added an Alpine stereo system. Now this is a fixed screen single DIN and is quite a powerful unit with full phone controls, maps, phone mirroring, reverse camera and music media outlet. When travelling, communication between vehicle to vehicle, we use a GME 80 channel UHF. And the reason I chose this unit is because all the controls are on the handpiece, which allows me to unplug it and put it away when it's not in use, keeping the interior neat and tidy. With the six speed automatic transmission conversion, we have managed to keep the original shifter in the vehicle, only having to change the shifter display. But with this transmission, it also comes with tap up, tap down feature, which I have cleverly used the old cruise control switches to operate. The compressor, front and rear lockers are controlled by modified original binnacle switches. And the only extra switches visible are these three. Winch safety switch, winch in and out, and engine cooling fan override.
As we don't tow anything when we travel, storage becomes very critical and it is important to use every bit of space available. So to utilise as much space as possible, I made my own drawer system and cargo barrier. At the top of the cargo barrier there is a pillow shelf. The pillow shelf can be accessed from the back seat as well as from the back cargo door. And we use it to store light things like pillows and jackets or anything else we may need to get access to while we're moving. The drawers in the fridge slide are bolted down to the floor and are fully enclosed, keeping all heavy objects secured in the unlikely event we are involved in an accident. The 50 litre Waco is on a fridge slide and the lower drawer is used for heavy items, keeping the top drawer for the lighter ones. The left hand and right hand side also has a lift up lid, giving access to two storage bins where I keep items that I don't regularly need, like the first aid kit, various tools and some spare parts. With the lids in place this becomes a flat shelf where we pack our clothes bags, chairs and tables, sleeping bags and mattresses and everything is contained between the pillow shelf, cargo barrier and the drawer system itself. If we plan to stay somewhere for more than two days without power, I take this red arc solar blanket and plug it into the Anderson plug, which charges the auxiliary battery at the bottom of the left hand bin. I have added a 50 litre Boab water tank between the back seat and the fridge and drawer system, which all just fits with millimetres to spare. The water tank is set up really basic with just a gravity feed through a standard garden hose connection, which actually works really well and being gravity fed that little bit slower than an electric pump stops you wasting water. But one of the biggest problems I had was trying to find somewhere to put a decent tool kit. Tools are heavy and they take up a lot of space. And the solution I ended up coming up with was to fit them all underneath the rear seats by sinking in all the foams out of a toolbox. Every tool now has a place, they don't rattle and they don't fall out and have taken up no internal cargo space.